Hey, it's Keenan with the Real Estate Exchange and Cloud Realty Group. Hi, Adam Hefner with First Rate Financial. So today we're gonna to have some pro tips for you guys to have a smooth real estate transaction because nobody doesn't want to have a smooth real estate transaction. If you're gonna have it, it might as well be smooth, right? Yeah, so what are your top three tips, Adam? It's a good question. So tip number one starts with a pre-approval, all right? The pre-approval is where your mortgage lender looks at your credit, your income, your assets, gives you a shopping range, and kind of comes up with a general structure or plan for what your mortgage is gonna look like. The most important part of the pre-approval is the word pre, all right? Meaning it happens in advance. So uh, it drives all of us crazy as professionals. When you go shopping for a home, you fall in love, but you've not gotten your pre-approval done first, all right? Because then everything is messy, it's a rush, and that's where accidents and mistakes happen. So make sure that you've got all your documentation into your mortgage lender up front bank statements, pay stubs, W-2s, anything else that they might ask for, make sure you get that done in advance of going shopping for a home. Tip number one to a smooth process. Yep, you don't wanna go hunting without having your rifle loaded. That's exactly right, yes. Uh, your pre-approval is your ammunition, so load your rifle. Tip number two. Tip number two is cash deposits, all right? So part of this process is the lender is gonna look at your bank statements, generally 30 to 60 days before your application goes live. What they're looking for is not necessarily what you're spending your money on, but they wanna make sure that you have sufficient funds for closing, any reserves that might be needed. They wanna make sure that you've got cash enough to be successful, all right? So they're looking for large or unusual deposits. So if we see a $5,000 cash deposit a week before applying for the home loan, it triggers a red flag and the lender's gonna to wanna to know where that money came from. And it has to be from a verifiable source, otherwise they will not let you use the money inside the transaction, all right? Things that they might be worried about. They wanna make sure that you didn't go get a cash advance on a credit card, didn't get a new loan or something like that. Something that might come with a new payment attached to it, which could jerk the debt to income ratio up. They also wanna make sure that the money is truly yours and isn't someone else's money that's being laundered through this process. So they wanna make sure it's not your drug dealer's money or, or anything else inappropriate going on like that, all right? So make sure that if you are going to sell an asset, if you have a snow machine, four-wheeler, vehicle, something that you wanna to sell to raise money, that's totally okay, but make sure you're having that conversation with your loan officer up front to make sure you don't run into issues later down the road. Third tip. Third tip is don't go acquire new debt during this process. One of the most important pieces of the pre-approval in the lending process is your debt to income ratio. That's the relationship between the money you make and the money you spend to make sure that you have enough left to pay for the home, right? So if you go out and start buying new appliances for the home, uh, you buy a new flat screen TV, a new couch and living room setup, all in advance of your sweet new house, mm -hmm. you're acquiring new debt, your debt to income ratio goes up. It also could damage your credit score and potentially cost yourself the entire transaction. So don't go buy yourself a new car during the process and have to end up sleeping in your car. Yeah, because sometimes we get you really, really, really good deals and people are like, oh man, I'm saving all this money, I'm making all this money, I'm gonna go out and get a Benz because I can afford it now. Mm -hmm. If you show up to the closing table in a brand new Benz, you're probably gonna be sleeping in it. So I hope you really like it. What they do is they pull a credit check right at the very end and if you have that new debt on there, it's gonna wreck everything, it's all gonna fall apart at the end, nobody's gonna like you, wanna hang out with you even though you got a new Benz. Exactly, so, yeah. What I got on my side, um, very similar. Number one, get your docs into Adam as soon as possible. If we get down to the end of the contract and we're not closing on time, it's probably because the buyer isn't getting the docs in on time uh, to their lender. It could also be because of an appraisal. Either way, get your docs into Adam as soon as possible. The second item is um, when we're talking about repairs, you do an inspection on a property, if it's some really small repairs, you're going to be better off just taking a price reduction. If it's gonna, if it's a couple thousand dollars worth of repairs, just have them knock a little bit off that price. Maybe they can cover a little bit more of your closing costs. You can probably do most of these simple repairs yourself and actually get a better deal, but it'll also speed up your contract because we're not waiting on contractors, getting bids on them, having to do a reinspection around the, uh, the home inspector's schedule. It eliminates all that stuff. We just send out a quick amendment, give you some concessions on the, on the terms of the contract, and we move right along to the closing table. Mm -hmm. The third thing is to be available. Mm -hmm. I just had a deal um, where the sellers listed their property for sale. We wrote an offer. It was a week for us to hear back from them because they were going through Canada, which I'm pretty sure Canada has cell phone reception. <laughs> it did not have cell phone reception for these people. 
Great thing is, is that we had a bunch of awesome people involved on, in it. We were still very patient. We got it under contract. But when you're under contract, I've had similar things happen. And it's real frustrating for everyone. So please be available uh, as much as you can and get those documents back and forth to your lender and your realtor as quickly as possible. And I can guarantee those will all help you benefit and have a smoother uh, transaction. Yeah, there's a strange thing that happens where someone who's not been on vacation for five years writes an offer to buy a new home, mm -hmm. and then immediately decides to go on vacation. Uh, it is unusual and strange, but it happens more often than you'd like to think. So mm -hmm. that's a great pro tip. Excellent. Well, we will catch you guys next time. Take care.